Darius Conji has shot some of the most visually striking films of the past 30 years, from Uncut Gems to Funny Games to The Beach, but today I want to look at one of his more interesting films and the techniques he used to shoot it. In today's video I'll be looking at how Darius Conji shot Seven, how he uses framing to his advantage, his use of lighting, as well as what equipment he used to achieve the dark but pristine look. As with any Finch film, the framing is precise. We only see what he wants you to see and every detail in the framing has been thoroughly thought out. From the beginning of the film, we are below the characters. They are smarter than us, they know more than us, and intellectually, we are below them. But we see that through the cinematography. When it comes to the first dead body that we see, we are above them. Not at high level and not below, we are better than the body, which can't be said for the main characters. We aren't always above or below the characters though, especially in the office where we are mostly at eye level or at least hip or shoulder. Nevertheless, we aren't looking up or down, most of the time anyway. Moving on to the sloth bust, we are constantly at a low angle throughout the scene. We are being looked down upon and it's in an almost violent fashion. This is until they find out that this isn't the person that they are looking for and Mills gets brought down to our level. On to when John Doe is first introduced where we are brought in at a low angle. He is the most powerful presence in the room and the scene, until he gives himself up, where he is just on the floor and we are stuck at eye level. Then in the car we are still at eye level, we are equal with all other parties in the scene, but once we are on the field, we are only ever in a low angle with him. We switch to the occasional eye level with Mills, but John Doe is never seen from above again. What's in the box? Not you give me the What's gun. in the fucking box? Until Mills shoots him in the head. Perspective in a film like this is everything. It subconsciously helps us, the audience, know who is in charge of the scene, if we are equal with the characters, or if we know more than they do. And Fincher is just a master at getting the audience to think what he wants us to think. I need to create an entire video on Fincher's use of colour since it stands out amongst directors, but Seven's colour stands out even in his filmography. His use of cooler colours throughout is something that really helps us understand the situation of the characters. This is a bleak case that they are in, and we very rarely stray from that cooler palette. We do it in the apartment, but whenever we are in the police station or outside, we are just staring at cool colours with sometimes a hint of orange. Combining the warm light of Chinese lanterns with the colder light of Kino flows was essential to the look of Seven, and in a way they represented a crossroads for me. Kino flows were the lights of the future, whilst Chinese lanterns were lights of the past and present. One of the most vibrant uses of colour in the film is once Spacey arrives. He is the outlier in every scene. He is the one in the red, both when he walks into the station and once he is detained. But whilst the other characters almost blend into their scenes, he stands out. To look at the lighting for a second, there is a stark difference between the lighting in a normal setting, for example the station or the apartment, in comparison to the crime scenes. They are often full of haze, allowing for strong beams of light from a torch and feeling almost like an easygoing atmosphere until you realise where you are. In general, it's quite a natural looking film but with some subtle stylization from the colours and the lighting. Also, the field at the end used to be a lush green, until they had to do pickups for the helicopter and it was more like a desert so they corrected everything else for it to look more golden. Shooting on the Atom 35.3 as well as the Panavision Panaflex Platinum and Gold, Konji had a range of different cameras to shoot from depending on the location. However, they only used one set of lenses, the Panavision Primos. These lenses allow for a high contrast look but with minimal veiling glare and ghosting. They are also designed for use with both film and digital cameras so if you wanted to rent a few for your film, you could stick them on your T3i. Before the use of digital cameras, one of the biggest parts of cinematography would be choosing your film stock. Would it be daylight or tungsten? Are you going Kodak or Fuji? There are so many considerations to take in when choosing which stock you want to use, but you have to do it at some point. On 7, Konji opted for Eastman's 35mm stock and chose their EXR50D, 200T5287 and 5293. 
50D is a great daylight balance stock with exceptionally fine grain, high sharpness, as well as having extremely accurate color tone reproduction. The same goes for their 200T stock, but it is instead a tungsten balance stock. Overall, as with any Finch film, the cinematography stands out, and for Seven, Darius Conji was obviously the right choice for DP. He brought his expertise in dark yet clean and clear lighting, his ability to light with subtle colouring allowing for an influence on the audience, as well as his ability to work with Fincher in order to show perspective. I hope you enjoyed this video looking at how Darius Conji shot 7. If you found it informative, a like is appreciated, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, then hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.